GMRS versus amateur radio radios. What's the big difference? I have two here. This is a Beofang UV5RA, which is basically a UV5R with a slightly different uh, exterior. This is a TID radio GM 5R. So, what's the big difference between amateur radio and G GMRS? Well, amateur radio uses the can use these little radios and they are not FCC type certified, meaning they're really not good for any other uh, radio service besides amateur radio. Amateur radio being an experimental service. I mean, if you stop and think about it, if you could take a razor blade, um, a nine volt battery, and a coat hanger and make a radio out of it, that's amateur radio. GMRS is different. They're, they're, it's not an experimental service. Uh, these radios must be type certified by the FCC for them to fall within the, the category of the rules and regulations that the FCC puts out. This radio can be programmed to function on these frequencies. This radio cannot be programmed to operate on the amateur radio frequencies. That's the big difference. These radios are locked into the GMRS channel frequencies. They have some standard repeater functions built into them. You can program the DCS or the tone or the CTS codes to cut down on the chatter, I guess it would be a way to, uh, the way to call that. In the old days for uh, FRS, GRMS radios, they called them security codes, but there's nothing secure about them. It just kind of helps cut down on chatter that you don't want to listen to. At the same time, um, this can program all the same codes, all the same frequencies, but you have to have an amateur radio license for this. There's three levels, the technician, the general, and the extra. The technician is all you need, and it's a very easy test. Um, pretty much anyone could do it with a very minimal amount of study. GRMS does also require a license. It requires cash. <laughs> That's it. Um, as of the making of this video, this is October 2021, the current license fee is 70 bucks. It's supposed to be 35 by the end of 2021. We'll see. But it's a 10-year license, so if you stop and think about it, that's seven dollars per year. If they make it 35 bucks, that's only 350 a year. So it's not a super expensive license. So is there a valid reason for someone with an amateur radio license to get a GRMS and get a GRMS license? Well, yeah, I think there is. I think there's a valid reason. Uh, an example would be since these basically have the same range capabilities operating in the UHF um, spectrum, if I wanted to go, you know, out to the park and have some fun with the family and we're going to get separated, I couldn't give this radio to a family member because they don't have a amateur radio license. This radio, however, I can give to family members. Um, family and friends is the way it's what used to be uh, described on the FCC website. And <clears throat> we could have two of these. I've got one right here, another one right here. And I could keep this and give this one to a family member and away we go and we can stay in communication with each other. Now these are 
not the 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 generic bubble pack radios like you get at Walmart or uh, Target or someplace like that. Uh, they are true GRMS frequencies. They do have a little bit more power on the GRMS channels. You can replace the antennas kind of by default. They've locked them down. As you can see, this one actually comes off real easy. <clears throat> but they are legal to have the antenna taken off. You just got to change it and take a set screw off and, and take it off. But yeah, I think there is a valid reason that every amateur radio operator should also have a GRMS license. It just gives you more capabilities, especially if you're going to be doing something like CERT, where there's a lot of civilian people who don't have ham licenses but still need to do communicating. Uh, you can set up repeaters for these. There's a, a myriad of them already around the country. So they have similar capabilities um, with limitations, I'll say that. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to talk to you briefly about some of the differences between GRMS and amateur radio when it comes to handheld radios. And is there a valid reason for a amateur radio license holder to get a GRMS license? And I think there is. That's it for this video. I appreciate you watching. Uh, please leave a comment. I do read all the comments. I don't always answer all the comments, but I do read them all. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell, give us a thumbs up, and have a great day. Thank you.